My work is this kind of voyage into a type of imaginary world that is it's quite barren, uh, empty, dark. It's kind of exaggerated version of, of some of the harsher sides of the nature here in Finland where I'm from. As a gallerist, I am very happy to have Janne in my team because he is one of the most talented young artists in Finland at the moment. He is uh, telling us uh, stories, but the story is timeless. Uh, they awake emotions in people who are looking. And I can find people crying. And that is very extraordinary. At first it, it looks a bit gloomy. They're pretty dark, they're pretty serious things. And that's something which kind of wakes you up. Then you start looking what's what's inside, thinking about what is it really about and what it means. He's sort of including these realistic painted from life elements with his imaginary landscapes. For the first time when I saw Janne's paintings, I was astonished because I thought that a young person could not be able to paint that kind of strong stories and uh, it tells maybe more about you than about the paintings. The new paintings he has been working with uh, are very large. They are, they are quite huge, so to say. They are two meters tall, three meters wide. When you have five of them, it's 50 meters. And they need to be huge because the story in the paintings is so strong. It's something to be experienced. You need to kind of roll your eyes slowly forward and just see the whole thing happening. It's actually quite amazing to uh, see because it's so big and it in, the big painting immerses you in a way into the story. It's very epic. You cannot paint them on small canvas. It's not possible. They have to be big.
I, I really always wanted to draw and paint. It's, it's been a huge part of my life. I've, I've done it as long as I can remember. That wasn't really something that was, that was very encouraged in Finland, I, found, I felt. The, the schools, the public education system here is very good. So the idea usually is that you, you kind of stay and stay and study here. It was just that art was not, especially realistic art wasn't, wasn't one of the options. The traditional painting has not been that appreciated in Finland during the last years. There is no like atelier type of schools or anything or the type of school that the Russian academies, there is none of that in Finland. As I got a bit older, towards my late teens, I started looking more into studying abroad. And I went and I visited Florence after finding out about a couple of the schools there. Uh, yeah, of course, was kind of <laughs> struck by it. And uh, half a year later, moved to Italy. Architecture, the sculpture on the streets, the churches, and the world-class museums. These were, these were all the kind of things that I had never gotten to experience back at home. And now, just living among them, seeing them every day, made a huge impression on me. Um, especially the, the large fresco type of works that I would see in the churches, with all these uh, depictions of hell, or damnation, all these contorted bodies, exaggerated gestures and uh, expressions, all this kind of intense suffering, and at the same time depicted in a way that was just remarkably beautiful. And I was just amazed at why aren't there people around doing this thing now? It was uh, the kind of thing that just instantly made me obsessed with wanting to make that kind of work one day by myself. As soon as I got to school and started studying, I quickly realized that this was sort of the thing I had always been dreaming of. I had never been in a community of art students, so all of a sudden I was surrounded by a lot of, of like-minded people. There were professional models, teachers, artists, all these great people that I could, I could work and interact with every day. And I was just instantly sort of sucked into it. Learning the skills for this uh, new dream uh, was, uh, was a different matter. I remember just the intensity of it. Long days of trying to meticulously perfect each and every aspect of uh, drawing, oil painting or sculpture, learning anatomy, composition, art history. Constantly comparing yourself to <laughs> the great artists of the past. When you look at Sistine ceiling in the Vatican by Michelangelo. It's so cartoony, it's so exaggerated, but his understanding of anatomy just made it all stick together. If they did it, then the old masters did it, then I gotta do it too. I remember him having like an easel on his bedroom and everything, and he would just keep drawing and painting ridiculously long days. He was doing a lot more than the, what, whatever the school wanted out of you. The years as a student did also teach me a, a valuable lesson in the sense that I realized how hard I would have to work as an artist. Uh, he, he's quite demanding, I think, and, and honest. But I think that's what you need to sort of get better. Then finally, after years of studying, I graduated and uh, started making my uh, first attempts at my own artwork. And initially they weren't this kind of larger than life, multifigural compositions. Uh, they started quite small, but uh, you know, gradually they got a bit bigger. More figures started being incorporated into the paintings. Um, the, the themes started having a bit more weight behind them. There was not many people doing multi-figure paintings in Florence. 
but uh, Jan got really interested in that. He was quite unique. Sort of putting together this, this world that you've never seen and you can't see in front of you, so might have an initial idea. But it takes a while to find a person in there, somebody that's uh, believable enough. A lot of attempts have to be made. You start thinking of who these people could have been or could be, what, what are they thinking about, and you don't know. Now that's sort of a large part of the fun, not to know. Then, after a few years of working, I came up with this idea. A project that was really uh, far, far bigger than anything I had attempted so far. Type of purgatory uh, in a non-religious sense where mankind is always responsible, or always facing the consequences of their last set of actions as they move throughout history. They represent uh, the human character and uh, things which have, have been happening to people. Depicting the sort of evolution or birth and destruction of the humankind. I started doing preparatory studies first to develop the composition. So here you can see some of the initial studies. The sketches are really nice and beautiful. They already tell, tell you the story or they, they already tell, tell you what, what he's thinking. I started hiring a model for each, each of the dozens of figures on the, on the composition and doing uh, individual studies of all the poses and expressions and things like that to really develop each aspect of the work to the, to the highest level possible. Here are some of the studies that I did from live models that I've used to work on the series. I mean, I, I never have models present when working on the final canvas. Kind of, mostly I work on imagination, but the uh, human body is pretty complex, so it's good to have some some, some information recorded from nature as well. Baroque art is a big inspiration for me. It's a huge influence on my work. So Van Dyck, Caravaggio. One that's uh, been always especially dear to me is Ribera. Uh, I tear out uh, the pages often, put them next to my paintings to compare. Uh, just the way he painted skin and, and light on the models is just it's a huge influence. So back then I was, I was still teaching a, a lot. I, I was very engaged in the academic community in Florence. He had a lot of things going for him in, in, in Florence back at the time. And I mean, he had a teaching position, a lot of friends, and it's a nice, good, tight community to be a painter. There's a lot of encouraging people. And as I started working more and more on this new, uh, very exciting project, if I continued teaching, if I continued my life as it was, uh, I wouldn't have the necessary focus to really bring this new project to the level that I felt that it deserved. He got a bit frustrated with that because there was not just not enough time to create stuff of like when you're teaching several days a week, like full full day. Because of all of that, I had to I had to leave. Suddenly, I got a call from him, and he he said that he's coming to Finland and he's leaving sort of everything behind in there, and I, I was uh, quite baffled. I felt I really had to isolate myself, to go and just, just work on this thing. I quit my job and I moved back to Finland. On one hand, I was very enthusiastic to work, but I, I came back here. And there, was, there was really no community. That kind of coupled with, of course, not having the ability of taking my 
personal life with me from, from Italy to Finland, made the, made the transition a, a lot heavier than I thought that it would be. So in a way I thought, I'm, I'm moving back home, so <laughs> uh, I, I'll know how things are there. Well, uh, world changes and I, I had changed with it. At this point I had to find all my motivation from, from within. I had with me all my studies, gotten all the materials in Italy and sent them to Finland. He got a studio space and then uh, I saw him stretch like massive canvases and then staple studies to use as reference and he used this method. He had the room filled with stuff and looking at the reference and painting and I find that routine is an essential part of my work. I work six or seven days a week, painting usually between six to ten hours, sometimes more. I, I spent probably a half a year on, on the first panel and just realized this wasn't it. And it wasn't something I could just fix at the end. I had to start from scratch. And by that point I had been working on the series as a whole for two years, I think, and in a way I had nothing to show for. <laughs> I had quit my job, uh, I was alone in Finland, it was in the middle of winter, um, and you have a community of people around me that uh, understood what the hell I was trying to accomplish. And it became more of a battle to finish it. And there were definitely points where, moments where you go through all the possible negative emotion, emotions you could have about um, pursuing an artistic goal, like you want to quit. You don't see the sense in it, you wonder why you started it. But the overall thing was, for me was more emotional. It was, it was like a deep personal thing that I had to, had to get out. It wasn't something that that I could kind of push aside. Because no matter how difficult getting it done was, I, I just, quitting was not an option. I had to get it done. Being back in Finland with all the tools sort of acquired over 10 years, it's been good for me to kind of have a fresh eye or look from a different perspective at the, at the great things here, especially the nature is, uh, is spectacular. Seeing the landscape kind of taking a lot of inspiration from things that when I was younger I took more for granted. of, I guess, just stubbornness, persistence and support from uh, my family and few artists or friends that I was fortunate enough to have around me. After, I think, two and a half years of just routine, everyday work on the series, I was, I was able to, to complete it. The series, which I've titled Universal Law, is a type of procession, this sort of march um, in which humankind enters this dark, uh, empty landscape and moves through it, uh, through a series of five large paintings, as if uh, moving through uh, history, moving through sort of the 
ancient times and heading towards the more contemporary ones. The beginning is about the more optimistic, idealistic sides of uh, humanity. The arrival of um, these figures into this landscape is, is very hopeful. There's a lot of enthusiasm, forward motion associated with the life force within the figures. Having to adapt to our new surroundings, either through religion, appealing to higher powers, organizing the society. The upper parts of the paintings depict ideas and powers influencing and controlling the people moving through the lower parts. to industrialization, rapid population growth. This torrent of figures pouring out of the canvas in an attempt to race towards something they don't even know what it is. collateral damage and how all of that eventually had to stop. Digitalization, modern technology and the sort of new type of slavery that mankind finds itself in. Sense of impending doom as future is often associated with a lot of fear. What will come of the environment? What will come of humanity? What to do with this newfound freedom as we enter towards the age of artificial intelligence? People can interpret the, the works however they like. There's a lot of things about history of humankind and it's probably purposefully left a bit vague what it's supposed to be about, but it's a, it's a grandiose story. You have to think a lot what has happened, what is going on, what is ahead, and you can uh, tell a story about the painting to yourself. and then to move back home. And 
be pursuing this in a, in a way a bit of a crazy thing. But just this kind of deep desire to see the work realized. Now, this, especially these last four years of isolating myself and working on this one project day after day, making the necessary sacrifices and really just building my life around it. done.